Are you looking to get started in the food truck business and you want to build your own food truck or your own food trailer from scratch or you found a used one that you want to make custom made for yourself and you want to do it yourself? Well, these are the videos for you. I'm Frank Baltieres and I started a video series called How to Build Your Food Truck where I take you step by step and I show you how to build it yourself from scratch. This back here used to be an empty trailer and now it's a full kitchen on wheels. You got your hood right here, cooking equipment. You got your fryer, gas lines, prep fridge all the way back there, your tables right here. And also you have your plumbing right in the front being your tanks, three compartment sink, your hand sink, a little dish rack right there, which I really like. And that's what I show you in these videos is how to do it yourself step by step. And in today's video, we're just going to be doing a quick overview on what I've done, showing you all the materials and also the parts that I've used to help you almost get like a shortcut on how you can build it yourself. And all the videos previous to this, I've shown you exactly on this trailer right back here, how I have done it myself. So again, Frank Baltieres on how to build your food truck. And in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of these uh, gas line danglers. I'm going to show you how I did that. And I have to move my outlet for my prep fridge because it's in the wrong spot. So those are the little things that I'm going to be working on today. But I'm going to show you a quick recap of what I've done. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for subscribing. Frank Baltieres, how to build your food truck. Today, I'm working on connecting this 12-inch burner right here. They call it a two burner. This is already LP based so you don't have to convert it sometimes they allow you to convert it in the field like when you buy it, it says field convertible from uh, natural gas to lp this one's already good it comes with its own regulator however in the front of the trailer i'll show you right now i have a i have a propane changeover regulator that you can swap between like different propane tanks 230 pound tanks that i have in the front so it, up there, it feeds all the equipments at once. So as I understand it, I'm not a gas professional. However, I have a little bit of experience when it comes to installing it. So if you want some more uh, professional help or wisdom, then you should contact a professional gas installer. However, in my experience, uh, these are what they call WC, which stands for water column. And they have to be like a certain um, gauge, as far as I know. And the one that I have in the front, it's a 10 or 11 uh, water column, I think they call it, WC. So it's enough for these two equipments to be able to, to work. The three actually, the fryer, the burner, and the griddle. It's what I have in my food truck, and it's worked perfectly uh, with what I have. So this one, as I mentioned, we have the griddle right here, 36 inch griddle and 12 inch burner and the fryer, and they all run off this right here. Let me show you. They all run off this propane changeover regulator. So I don't use, once you put one in here, you don't have to use the other one that comes with the equipment because typically you, know, you would have had like this tank or something running to the, straight to the propane, straight to this, and then this goes over to your equipment. But since over there we're bypassing it, we don't have to use it. So I don't use it. I'll use, I'll say for my, my food truck, I don't use it. Do you have to? Can you put two of them together? To be honest, I'm not sure. So you'd have to ask for that. But I don't use two of them. I just use the one that's in the front and that feeds all the equipment that I have. So I'm working on the back here. As you can see, this one has a three quarter inch uh, input or output. I would say it's an input because gas is coming in. And I have another one right there, but I'm gonna 90 towards that way. Same thing here, I'm gonna 90 towards that way. Uh, and then I'm gonna loop around, loop around over here to my little, um, we call it the, we'll call it the manifold, the main artery of my propane lines right there. So there's a fryer that got connected. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for these two right here. And since this is a refrigerated chef base, it's actually pretty cool, but I just don't know how to secure it. I'm trying to come up with ways on how to secure this without having to drill into this. On my food truck, uh, I just screwed it into the tables and it worked nice. So I might have somebody come over here and put like either like a tube, stainless steel tube right here on top of the legs and then kind of give it a couple tack welds. So that way it holds the legs up nicely there. That's kind of the, the idea that I have for it. There's that mega top that you guys kept asking me about. This thing's massive inside. I just find it so much overkill. 
on the mega top you guys asked about this and that's why uh, i didn't like it it's just overkill for the top so let me show you the progress of what i did here so there's that 90 actually i didn't kick it out that way because i would use a lot of uh, flex hose gas hose so i came this way to the right same thing on this one i came this way to the right so you can see this is a cooking equipment just so you can get a perspective this is a griddle this is a burner and then this is the back of it right there so there's one there's two that one is actually a black pipe thing but it has a lot of spots on it but it still worked perfectly it's the only one that they had at home depot so we used it and then we came over here we ran the flexible hoses right back there boom boom we got one for this one is a burner goes right to the middle you can see it has a shut off valve right there and the bottom one right there is for the griddle and the top one is for the fryer so that's how this little contraption looks very cool finally just i just wanted to get it done to be honest and today was somewhat of a warm day but not really but yes it was but we got it done completed and i just wanted to show you the end product of how this looks actually this one i might cut it down just a couple maybe like an inch and a half too because it's a little bit long because when i put the fryer next to this right here this kind of sticks out so i want to just shorten this this one up right here just a little bit but besides that everything you see here is exactly how it's going to look i'm going to give it a test run here shortly not today probably tomorrow i'm going to hook up a propane 30 pounder and then turn this on and then i don't know about the griddle yet but for sure i'm going to turn on the burner so you guys can see it light up we can see the flame quality and how it looks and then everything from there should be good so there's a wolf burner this is a c uh, cpg yeah cpg ultra griddle so there you go and that's how the hoses look let me take you on a quick field trip and show you my food truck this is rolling burritos this is my food truck that i currently run right now it's closed for the season but this is a, a well it's a used one but new for me it's a prep fridge that i picked up on marketplace this is actually a little bit bigger. This is 60 inches long instead of the regular 48 because I wanted to have more refrigeration space. And the reason, this is one of the reasons I don't like the mega tops that I was telling you about. And I'll show you why. If you see here, the cutting table, number one, is 12 inches long. And the walking space between the table here and the prep fridge, even if it's longer, if it's bigger, and it's this is just a regular prep fridge. This is not the mega top. Look how big it is, the big difference. It's the same table. These are 18 inch wide tables, but look at this walking space. If you see here, from the table all the way to where the cutting table meets, it's 29 inches. So that's actually pretty nice because almost two people can fit right there. If you put your butt like this, right? If you're cooking like this and you got somebody else over here uh, cashing people out, taking orders, that is great space it's 29 inches now let me show you how it is on the mega top fridge this is why i do not recommend it especially like on food trucks where you're very limited on space if you have a seven foot wide um trailer so let me show you the mega top aisle and why i would not recommend it to you okay so here's that mega top if you can see there's a huge difference in how everything looks even this cutting table how big is this one this one's eight inches. The one I just showed you was 12 inches length of a cutting board, which actually this is very useful space. Now let's, if you can see here, the aisle right there is a lot smaller. These are the exact same tables. They're 18 inches from back to front. Let me show you. There they are. So you guys don't think I'm cheating. They're 18 inches, exact same table. The only thing difference is that these kind of have almost like a flat front. Mine are a little bit more round, just different manufacturers, but the same, uh, width or from front to back depth but this is the aisle space i was telling you about so remember on mine being rolling burritos i had 29 inches look at this 23 and a half inches so you're almost cutting about about five and a half inches look at that mine comes out to right here so you can see where this where this is right there so that's a huge difference of aisle space that makes a big difference when you have a couple people in here I mean, you know sometimes i've had four people in my food truck this one let's say they have four people in here as well that's gonna make a huge difference but this is what i'm fixing right here so right here if you can see this outlet right here 
comes with this kind of plug from this prep fridge. It comes with this kind of plug. And if you can see, this is gonna be a big problem because once I plug it in and even turn this piece of copper right here, the wire, it's about three inches. So it's gonna even extend out three more inches this way. So what I have to do is pretty simple, but it has to be done is this outlet right here. I'm actually gonna leave the wire mold box and I bought an extra piece of wire mold that you see right there. I'm gonna extend that out almost to come right there and I'm gonna put the outlet right here. I can't use this one because that's a separate circuit for food warmers. So that right there is its own circuit by itself because food warmers typically suck up a lot of electricity. So right there, I'm gonna extend that outlet and put it right there. So that's kind of like my take on why I don't like these mega top fridges. Um, I would stay away if you can, but if you have it, then obviously make use of it. But uh, people kept asking me over and over, why are you against mega tops? And that's pretty much it. There you go. So the quick overview goes like this. I'm gonna tell you all the parts I've used. This is a 48 inch mega top uh, fridge. This is my panel. It's a Siemens uh, eight space panel. And then we move along right here. You can put a table here or you can almost even put a, a propane gas uh, steam table if you wanted to. That's a refrigerated chef base. This right here is a 36 inch griddle, 12 inch burner and a 15 inch uh, fryer. So that's pretty much it on the left side. That's all the cooking equipment up top right here. We have a seven foot uh, hood from Hood Mart. The fire suppression system actually was picked up and installed after. Hood Mart does sell it with the fire system, the Ansel system. I do not purchase with it because you still have to get it certified from a professional certification company. So I might as well just get it installed with them. This little switch is what activates that right there. Uh, this is my outlets. That's my switch outlet for my switch right at the bottom. So that can be turned, you can turn off and on the prep fridge without having to turn off the breaker. What else do we got over here on the left side? Oh, I already showed you my um, outlets, my quad for my food warmers. Nothing else back here. On this side, I did make this contraption right here. That's something that I found in another food truck and I copied it. It's almost like a manifold that gives you all the shutoff valves and everything for your propane lines. This right here is the, the fire suppression system that I had installed. I did not do this. This is one thing that I did not do because I can't because I'm not certified to tag it. And there it is, that's what they did right there. This is all stainless steel walls. I do not use stainless steel anymore, only behind the cooking equipment because it's so darn expensive to buy it. This is my dish rack that I have. It actually comes in handy quite a bit. It's a Regency 600 SW36. This is my prep fridge. Sorry, my prep fridge, my three compartment sink made by Advanced Tapco. And over here off with us in DuPage County, you need drain boards on the left and on the right. So that's what we have there. I have my two water tanks down here, a wastewater and a fresh water from Class A Customs. My hand sink. Uh, also, I have a ventless, I repeat, ventless. I do not need an exhaust system for this. I don't know how many times I get that question. Like, how do you exhaust it out? How do you, um, how do you vent it? I do not have to vent it because it is ventless propane water heater that goes right there is my sea flow water pump and all the plumbing lines right here with the pex lines half inch pex i have my fire extinguishers right there again stainless steel all over i have my switches right there a little towel dispenser i have a ticket holder right here um, so you can put your little tickets right in there right in there what else i have my 18 inch tables Together combined, they're 10 feet long, five foot and five foot. I have my concession window from Class A, sorry, from uh, JR Aluminum out in Ohio. Very good people out there, as well as Hoodmark. They are both in Ohio. So that's kind of the overcap of what we have inside. Now let me show you the front where the propane tanks are and the generator, but that's pretty much it in the front. A quick overview just so you can see it and have a good visual of how everything looks and how everything is placed. Now let's walk over to the front. Oh, and my can lights right up top. I have four can lights that are LED that get switched right in there. And let me show you the outside. This is the outside right here. I have two exterior lights, one right there, one right there. I also have LED 
uh, multicolor lights, the rope lights. I have this serving tray right here that goes up and down. Uh, I did add this on here. This is something that I just added recently, which is almost like a step because these trailers are kind of hard to get into. So I added that in there. And also, here we go. Walk into the front. I have my two 30 pound tanks that go right here. I have my propane changeover regulator that if one tank goes empty, you can always turn it to the left or you can turn it to the right. And that way you are never out of propane because you can always take this one to get filled up and that one stays full and vice versa, vice versa. This is my 50 amp plug that I have right here. And then I have my SOOW cable that runs underneath my trailer. The power cable runs all the way around the bottom of the trailer right there. And then it goes on to the other side. But this is it right here. It's made by Reliance. Uh, the SOOW 50 amp cable that goes to that breaker pan. Right here you have the uh, gravity fill valve that fills with your water. And then down here, I have to finish these up real quick. But these are going to be almost the waste. These are going to be the waste uh, levers. I had to order those. They were on back order, but I got those in finally about a couple days ago. But that's pretty much it. That's the recap of how this looks. And I'm just doing the final touches here so I can uh, button this little bad boy up. I'm trying to still figure out how to secure these chef bases because they're on wheels. So that gets interesting. I don't know yet. If you guys have any ideas, please let me know. I've never used a refrigerated chef base, but I have now. So I do not know how to secure it, but if you have any ideas, please let me know. You do not need to know all the answers. You just need to kind of get started and you'll figure it out on your, as you go. So hopefully that helps on the overview of how I built this food truck. Thank you for watching again. The good thing about having this outlet as a switch outlet is that you can just shut this off and you don't have to shut off your breaker. So I'm gonna take this outlet out right here. I'm gonna move this, as I said, this wire mold box is going to go right over there. So I'm gonna add the piece of wire mold from here to there. And all I'm gonna do is put a blank cover right here. So just a cover, kind of like this, right here. And this box is gonna stay because I don't wanna have a hole in the stainless steel right there because this has a Romex wire right inside so i'm just going to connect it right there with another romex wire and go right over to the right so that's pretty much it on how we're going to fix this small little um detail nothing major nothing big nothing crazy but just wanted to make sure i showed you every detail on how i do these um little knickknacks <laughs> these little fixes on the food trucks so there you go all right so here it is here's my romex wire it's a 14-2 romex wire that goes right here to this wire mold box and as you can see here, the way that this wire mold gets uh, st stuck in there is just has like this little indent on the box. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just kind of put it right in there and see if I can do it with one hand. And if I can't, I'm going to have to log off real quick. Give me two seconds. Sorry, it could not be done with one hand. I need it both. So I got my level here. I'm going to place this on the wire mold. And then I'm going to go to the other side, put some self-tapping screws and screw that right to the stainless steel. Let me show you real quick how we're gonna do that. So we're just gonna make sure we're level here with that. Eventually it's gonna be right around there. You can see a little bubble. And then we're just gonna take our self tappers and go two screws right here. So let me do that because I need both hands. So right here you gotta take your impact driver or just a drill bit and do two pilot holes because the stainless steel is really tough to get in. Uh, into right there so we got one right there and two right there and now we take our self-tapping screws stainless steel and connect the box right into that so you're gonna need either square tip or the bigger Phillips head to be able to do this one so there we go we got the nice level bubble right there so that wire mold is nice and level and then we're gonna run a wire the same Romex right there the 14 2 I'm gonna run it right over to here as you can see, we secured it now with the two screws. And that's pretty much it. That's how we're gonna reroute this electrical. Pretty simple stuff. From that spot right there, all the way to here. And then we can plug in our prep fridge and it can be nice and set up complete and we can secure it down somehow so it won't move when we're moving stuff around. I got a nice little way that I secure my prep fridge and my cooking equipment 
to move from uh, transport. All right, so now that we have this plug moved, let's move the fridge back. This right here is actually almost like a junction box, a pull box for my main cable that goes up to my breaker panel right there. But this can scoot up to the back all the way there. And now you can see at least we don't have to plug in the plug here. I already have it plugged in over there. And now it might give us actually a little bit more aisle space. Let's double check that. There you go. What do you know? It actually gave us an extra inch of aisle space. Now we're at 24 and a half inches of aisle space, which is always better to have more than the 23 and a half that we did. And then here it is plugged into the bottom as such. And that's how it looks. Not too bad. Not too bad. We got this uh, down in here. Now we just got to kind of secure it. I have a little uh, contraption that I use. I actually put it on one of my previous videos, a bar that I go across right here. And that holds this prep fridge here for moving back and forth. But there you go. That's how you move an outlet and get it ready for installation on the prep fridge. Thank you again for watching.